Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the IGL officially unofficial cast. I am your host, Alex. Otherwise, I'd like to go by Mask on the Internet. Of course, I am joined by the most uh, um, supremely awesome of amazingness of casters that make me uwu blast all over the place. Um, uh, ayaya, ayaya. Uh, can I get a pog champ in the chat? Casters of Initialize and Nymera, the Hapgood Sam. Brothers. What, um, what, the, what, <laughs> what the duck? What degeneracy is? Sam, <laughs> get, get the flamethrower. Get, get, fl get the heavy flamethrower. <laughs> get, get him out of here. That, that was possibly the, the worst filth I've heard come through my that headset. Was, that was ever. like an unironic woo. It was. Um, you've come, you've, what if, what if, what has first, happened to him? First, we are beset by dark cultists from the Church of Luna, which is like the anti Arya Church. <laughs> now we are beset with like a, 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 like a degenerate, Phil, a degenerate weeb disease. COVID can step aside. I always knew it'd be you that would weebify yeah. the gel gel. I always knew. Yeah, of course. It's all my fault. Me. It's all my fault. <laughs> it is. CGA and Rascal Jesters. That first game from Rascal Jesters. What a first game. Yeah, um, so uh, Rascal Jesters playing very well consummately as a team. Um, Arya not firing on all cylinders. Even though Nap had a very good game on the next one and Cogcog bore the brunt of that um, good game from Nap. The team fighting was on point from Rascal Jesters. They got themselves to a Mountain Soul with an Orn, which is always a very dangerous prospect, and then just closed out with some good team fights. And uh, quality work from from Art. I think he was very good, but I want to give some serious credit to uh, Vivid as well on that Morgana. Was zoning out a lot of uh, CGA from pretty much any route through the jungle they cared to take alongside Cog Cog with his twin shadows. Made sort of any setup around objectives very difficult for CGA, and Rascal just was punished accordingly. Yeah, and particularly when they're trying to set up around the objective with an Akali who's trying to get through vision, it makes things very hard. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I'm more impressed that I actually broke initialize halfway through that. Um, I can break you with my words. Interesting. I just yeah, have to do it in a different way that I'm used to having to do that. Okay. Yeah. Noted. Yeah. Noted. Thank you, Nightmare. You have taught me the way. So, Tilt yeah, him to a different level. <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. Just got surrounded just... by filth and heathens alike. Um, yeah, I also want to say like we like ninja solo kill onto Arya. That's a that's big it. deal. That's, that's like why a statement. That's, that's why we're recording this instead of streaming it live. It's because the solo kill happened and then just like <clears> pretty <throat> much the laws of physics broke. They did. Oh yeah, that that hurt my computer. Uh, I don't understand <laughs> anything. Uh, it just it just didn't like it. It didn't like it. It was saying it was uploading. It just was it's like, it's, Twitch it's servers were like, nah. So many of the holy words of Arya stored upon your PC that it just <laughs> shook in sheer outrage. And just, nope. Yeah. Nope. Okay. And, uh, and thus the dark wrath of CGA was unleashed. And uh, they're going to have to try and improve in game two and channel that wrath into potentially a game victory. So what do CGA need to do to beat Rascal okay. Jester? Like, he... As that's the question now. Okay, so they pick blue side on this draft. Um, I think it'd be good if they um, maybe move away from the Akali. I don't think it's worked for them in a lot of their games. I know that you've hated it. I I'm coming around. Akali's garbage, dude. I think th I think that Akali is one of these champions where if you play close to your limits like Arya does, you can have these fantastic games. But it is not as reliable as so many other champions. It's not. So... You know, and it's something like LeBlanc, the reason why he did so well on it is that he can make these plays reliably. There's a lot of point and click. It's sure. a lot of. Uh, there are multiple ways you can play the game. Akali has a very well defined play pattern in a lot of ways around team fights, and that doesn't make things easier. I also think That's that true. Yoshi, it would be better if Yoshi could get a better jungle matchup. Hashimetra is playing really well. Maybe removing the Olaf just to stop that real can like yeah. early, early headbutting in the jungle to give him a little bit more leeway to come into the team fights a bit earlier. That would help. And then also Maybe. the bot lane. The bot lane, I, I, I don't know. I, it, it's going to be a lot of different things. I don't think that um, I don't think that the Varus alongside the Nautilus was working out for them, even though it does give them some playmaking. Yeah. I think the big thing for me is like, I want to staple on a little bit to the end of that jungle point is mm. it basically means that Yoshi needs not to be tracked in the early game. Mm. Uh, Hachimecha is one of those junglers, a little bit like Blank, who if he has information or a good read on the like level one, two, three of a jungler, can absolutely ruin a game. And um, 
Hachimachi wasn't necessarily the reason they won, but he was the reason that the early game for CGA was a bit of a trial. Uh, and it meant that Yoshi was kind of forever a little bit behind that Olaf who was always around and willing to contest. And it meant that at least never really pulled off the kind of insane ganks she can do in the early game. She got one, right, onto Cog Cog when he yeah. kind of walked a bit unwittingly into the bush uh, at the top line. That's it. And that was of Cog Cog misplaying rather than at least making a play. Yeah, and it it's going to be interesting to see how Hachimachi is going to continue having this kind of uh, advantage as it would be the jungle diff as we have all come to know truly well. And I mean, the pick and ban phase is also going to be interesting. Where are the champions going to go? Are we going to see some aggressive top lanes? Are we going to see some like really kind of grindy lanes that we've been seeing what's cog cog gonna keep doing is he gonna keep playing these like pope top laners or is he gonna go back to his normal thing of uh I dueling call things that can teleport honestly uh <laughs> teleport these, flank. Yeah. yeah these these, teleport these flank. teams are Gang very well i mean the ultimate works on that but the idea is that basically you need to turn up to a lot of these fights when people like aria love to skirmish has mm. to loves to skirmish ninja is a playmaking person to good or ill <laughs> we'll put that that way but to good or ill that is a man who likes to make his plays and um teleports are the game changer when it comes to that kind of fight very true with that all said i think it's about time that we go into this pick and ban phase and as we are a true blast from the past let me count us in in three two one good luck to both these teams uh, I, I feel like I've seen this before. It's like de de deja vu. Deja I've been vu. in this place before. before. That was well played, sir. But I'm, I'm here and the degeneracy is rising once more. And I must bite down the tide to bring you game two of CG versus Rascal Jesters. Uh, and I will try and remove this filth from the cast on my left. Uh, either way, CGA, blue side, Rascal Jester, red. Bands already in place. Tom Kench and Morgana taken off the board by Press Gaming Act. Zoe, and I'm going to assume a LeBlanc coming out from the Jesters. I think you have to ban the LeBlanc away from Alia still, particularly when the first pick available mm -hmm. is, well, is available there. Interesting that it's two support bans versus Vivid. Vivid had a good Morgana game in the last uh, in the last game, did kind of stymie a lot of the hooks, meant the 2v2s were not so deadly from CGA, but it does mean that a couple of power picks are going to slip through this first phase of bans. Because, of course, so with the Olaf going away as well, we're either going to see a set or an Orn let through. Maybe both. Yes, and uh, kind of wondering what the last band here. Maybe a Callista versus CJ who have defaulted back to that. But they may think about something else. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of that Olaf band as well. I think Hachimecha can of, um, do some fairly strong things. Yep. Yeah, a Thelios. Yeah, Gango. Yeah. Gango is a pretty good Thelios. We, that makes we, some sense. We, we saw what happened with the Thelios in game one. It, it got pretty nutty when you have the crescendo around late game team fights. Um, yeah. it, it's so much thoning. The so it's a good item of Thelios. It is uh, a little bit disgusting. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> set first, set first pick, not a surprise. Uh, flexible. Uh, Nat plays it pretty well. That does some good flanks. Uh, good first pick, I reckon. Yeah, I, I reckon CJ don't particularly want to put the set into the mid lane. Adia likes a few more of his more overt assassin types, but it could also go down to the, the support. We saw that in the first um, series of the day as well. We saw that the three picks that their laner on there doing a pretty good job of it. Orn locked in in response. It's probably, that is another flex pick can go between top lane, mid lane, and also support as well. The Varus, <clears throat> excuse me, taken away and locked in for Art. Gango played that in the first game. And be aware, ladies and gents, that is very much a flex pick for Rascal Jester. Ninja plays it mid, can also go towards Art. Similarly, Cog Cog, I'm sure, plays Orn. Ninja can play that too. Very open draft for the side of the Jester right now. Callista and Jarvan locked in for CJ. I'm a big fan of that Jarvan for Yoshi particularly. Yeah, Yoshi had a really good game of Jarvan in the tiebreaker versus Burning Core, probably his best jungle game of the split to date. And uh, Callista locked in as a potential flex pit. We have seen some Callista top hanging around. We saw it one game in the first game of Axes versus V3. Didn't quite work out, but you know, it is that it gives you that flexibility within your draft. It means that you don't necessarily have to choose your matchups until you've locked in all of your members. And of course, the set can be moved around the place like we have said and we may have lost the narwhals our sort of weird di dire narwhals the weird land whale hybrid mess of a thing but we have got land sharks the queen of the xerxi is locked in for hatcher metcher rexai is one of his better picks did some exceptional things on in week seven especially when death was on it like 505 versus Saint gaming all that kind of jazz 
Nice pick. Silas bound away in phase two by Rascal Jester. Adios had some pretty, cra pretty crazy games on the Silas. It is a worthy ban. He has so much playmaking available on that champion. And having something like the Call of the Forge God and the Chains of Corruption to carry away, particularly when the Chains of Corruption have that really high AP scaling, it's a uh, it's high value uh, ban okay. there from Rascal Jester. You know what Silas needs? More executors. I'll steal the Void Brush from a Rek'Sai. That sounds like a bit of a mess as well. Uh, Aatrox banned away, actually, alongside a Nautilus by CGA. Aatrox being an interesting one there, I think. They assume that Sep may be still a flex, I guess. Uh, yeah, like we said, Sep can be moved all around the place, and uh, Nautilus banned away from Rascal Jester, denying that strong Complete laning duo. Bands. It's, it's a lot of support bans. Vivid came out pretty huge in game one. Um, but Nautilus being the ban um, away from that duo lane, really good into team fights uh, with the Varus, has that kind of double CC alongside pretty, pretty large burst damage actually from the Nautilus alongside the Varus team. So uh, looks like we're just coming out of champion slight due to some kind of error in there. The so as, yeah, as is tradition, we do invite our, our producer and hosts and friend and, and brother in arms, Mass Swan, are you around? That was uh, that was done better than I was expecting you to do that, Nymera. The, you started questionable, but you, you recovered really well. You stuck the landing, as you would say. I, that's that, I, I always try to. Sometimes it's just like straight on the place, but you know. I mean, you got to keep the smile even if you land on your face. Oh, yeah, 100%. you got to fully commit to it because then no one knows that it's a mistake in the long run. No, if you fall on your face, people, people tend to know. Yeah. No, they don't. No, that's <laughs> not what my mum says. So Spoken no. Spoken by a man who <laughs> falls on his, his face. face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, a lot. Uh, uh, so where's this draft going in your well, eyes? Well, this is the, this is the scary thing, right? We do have flex picks available from both teams, and you know, I, I think that Rascal Jester are maybe the most creative drafting team out of the LGL teams. They do have so there. many unique champions in Definitely. the mid lane and in the bot lane as well. Art being one of um, the larger champion pools in the bot lane as well. So honestly, it could go anywhere thus far. We do have two junglers locked in. That's what we mm -hmm. only know, really. That's true. I want to stress, like. At the end of this, one of these teams won't be moving forward. We've already lost yeah. one team so far, and that's Axis, as you've already said. One of these teams doesn't get to go any further, and it's going to be really sad to see one of these teams go. It will be. Um, and every time we lose a team, first it was the Hawks, then Burning Corn, then Axis as well. You know, every time we lose one of these teams, it is a little sad because, you know, we have watched them for the entire split, and we've enjoyed watching them. Um, this is not the time to kind of... Play softball with them, though. The team mm -hmm. that wants to win today has to win well. They have to prove themselves because V3 looked very, very strong they earlier. Did. And I think that either of these teams will be looking forward to that round two match if they do have mm. a big time. Ha have have the, the courage to look forward to that and think, okay, we need to be coming in, coming in hot because they certainly are. With the first game win from Rascal Jester and playing around the win conditions, I wouldn't say it was as emphatic as some of V3's wins. Nope. But, um... There's still a whole series to go. Yeah, and uh, I think what it was from that first game was the Jesters knew their win conditions and played to them quite well and mitigated the weaknesses they did have. So when Cog Cog was struggling, they find ways to protect him and get him into team fights where they were winning around Art, around Ninja, around Vivid. They found some good stuff in their team fights. So like, I appreciate the Jesters kind of read on their status in game on how to kind of leverage it into good positions in the game. Hmm. I'm a bit surprised by CGA banning so many supports, frankly. Uh, well, I mean, I remember back in pregame of, C of uh, the first game, you were saying uh, support difference was certainly a factor I mean, sure. to, um, to consider. And Vivid did play well. I think that yeah, but the Vivid's Morgana... just a good and... support player. He is. And I think that um, particularly in the supports that were banned in um, the Time Kench and the Morgana... They are picks which protect the AD carry. And yes. what True. do we think about Arya? Arya loves to kill the AD carry. So maybe it's something more of a... Uh... Deny it's more of a frustration pick, maybe from the more diving members of CGA. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, we are now back into this pick and ban phase. I I mean, it's interesting from CGA also banning this Olaf, like, as you as you hinted towards at the end of game one, like, is that just... Of basically protecting Yoshi, effectively. Yeah. Either Olaf... If Olaf gets a read on you early, either he comes and kills you, or he gets to kind of outpath you, steal all your jungle, and you just end up 30 camps behind or whatever. Like he was like 30 CS behind at one point with Yoshi, was multiple levels behind, was struggling in that early game. Yeah. I think that um, Olaf allows you to leverage kind of the, uh, the jungle skill that you might have. Um, definitely has all the tools in the early game to mm -hmm. really start hammering home some of these skill-based matchups. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I'll let you two continue on with this pick-and-burn phase.
Pleasure to have you, Lexi, as always. It was the Aatrox ban. It wasn't a mistake. Something else clearly went wrong in the draft. But that means Rumble, last ban here from CGA, uh, is another ban one of those Ninja. flex. Yeah, Ninja loves to play. I'm sure Cog Cog does as well. Most top laners do. Uh, looking to lock in a Karma here. Which would be a flex pick in itself. Yeah, it is mid support top. Yeah. Not jungle. No Not jungle. jungle. But yeah, Barris Karma is a fairly significant amount of co poke. Yeah, it absolutely. Bottom would be a very different experience. Oh yeah, we a very love lovely our, drink. Yeah, we love our fizzy drinks though. Um, so Karma being able to, yeah, we so Rascal Jester not even showing the flavor of their composition yet as well in terms of the laning phase. Whereas the Thresh has been locked in for Grendel. I think it has been one of his better champions when he's chosen to show it. It's hyper safety with the Callista one being able to save the other with either the Lantern or the Face Call, and then actually quite a lot of laning damage as well with the play and power door throwing to hook and all this other stuff allows Callista to start really start stacking up those run stacks thinking about that Azir and it is locked, locked in, in for Arya we saw him in the last week of play have some good early shuffles on that Azir but yeah, kind of struggled a little bit towards the mid and late but we know he's got the playmaking uh, got to be a little bit careful about who he's shuffling and if he can get onto the Varus that's all well and good perhaps an Orn may be a little bit trickier uh, yeah, well, at least uh, Azir, we sh we've seen that Arya does have the early playmaking. The, the game that they lost on the Azir was due to a Baron steal, so... Uh, uh, but, but at least they had the... Oh, yeah. okay. okay. All right, we're going to cut it a little bit short then. Blitzcrank locked in, which means that the Karma will probably be going, I would imagine, top lane, and the Ninja picking up the Orn once again. Varus Blitzcrank... It means that at level 6, Varus starts landing the Chains of Corruption, and then you can start very much killing someone straight off with the rocket grab from Blitzcrank with all of that pick potential. Yeah. Will be a little bit trickier in that bot lane, though, because if you land it onto Grandel, he just gets Fate's Call away, and if you don't kill Callista quick enough, she hops and gets onto a Lantern from Thresh. Potentially not the easiest lane to 100 to 0, but they have got opportunities there. Uh, top lane, though, it's Karma versus Set currently, okay. so it'll be top lane Karma. So... Back when we saw a lot of the supports in the top lane meta, a lot of them were versus set because you can somewhat disengage from that match of using your slows and your self heal abilities, and um, and and then start trying to poke, push in, and get some priority across the map. Spell thieves obviously doesn't work in that same way anymore. Way anymore. So it's not going to be about freezing the wave at your turret and then start stacking up on that and then leaving set vulnerable to ganks. It's going to be about ending up getting priority and building up towards um, your supportive items, and hopefully that is what will happen for Cog Cog in this game two. Game one didn't really go for him. We have these whole compositions put in now. There's a lot of team fight. There's some pick available too. I love the fact that Jarvan has three uh, carries which scale off of attack speed very well in Set, Azir, and Callista. Nice kind of with that. There's a, like a triple good buff there. Obviously, and Thresh doesn't really care about it. So it's three people that really work through that. Whereas on the other side, of course, you've got Rek'Sai being the early jungler uh, and then Orn being around for the team fight alongside Karma and Varus as well. Keep your eyes on Art, whether you're a CGA fan or a Jester's fan, because if that man ever ends up significantly behind, the Jesters are going to run out of damage pretty yeah. fast. My, my worry is that it's a single threat comp. Uh, there is some... Oh, the word we like to use as it's just the fallback word we use is incidental damage just damage which comes as an effect of other stuff when you're trying to have your engage from the uh, call of the forge god or you've got karma just throwing out skill shots left and right and then of course rex in the midst as well sometimes that can lead up to another person's worth of damage but honestly varus is going to be the lion's share of the dps here for the jesters who are one nil up i look very good in that first game He's taken the Hail of Blades. It's not going to be Poke Varus. It will be, um, not Hail of Blades. At least the Tempo, that's the one. Um, it, we, <laughs> it was, in my head, I was like, he hasn't taken Hail of Blades, which is what we saw earlier. Um, but it be. is the Lethal Tempo. It's still going to be on hit DPS Varus. Yes, it is. And uh, Jesters have got that 1-0 lead. I thought, who am I favoring here? I think CGA's draft looks easier to execute. But if the Jesters can pull this off, can get up fed, he is more than capable of running over a game. Yeah, and there's no cleanse from the Callista, which means that if Chains Corruption land, there could be a very dead Gango. But there are multiple carries you need to be aware of on CGA. So, we see the early wards go, and I believe they spot out the starting clear from Rascal Jester. I can't see if it's actually overlaps on the minimap there. But um, Yoshi is not spotted this time. So, with no one turning up to lane from the Rascal Jester, they will know that Rek'Sai starts on the bottom side. Whereas CG, oh, actually Yoshi will be known to be started on the top side because the lane is already there. Yeah, and that is a 
big advantage for Gango and uh, Grendel in this bot lane. Did manage to pull the wave a little bit, got to that CS early. There was a nice hail of blades, but that's actually pretty good trade with the playback onto Vivid there. There was a hook, but that was ouched. Yeah, there's the, the, the full Hail of Blades autos coming in from the Callista there alongside the Empowered Flay auto started by Grandel on the Thresh. Means that the trade at level 1 goes the way of the Callista and the Thresh, and they will get priority in this lane. One thing I noticed in the... Uh, I think it was the very first Gango game uh, on Callista, they gave up priority in the lane and it kind of fell apart from there. But Callista with priority in lane is a very different kind of beast. Yeah, and uh, Art, as kind of this primary carry, does need to make sure he's not getting too forced away from experience and gold, because that could be pretty risky. Yoshi is around at the bot side. Hachimacha is not right now, so no. that could yeah. mean early fresh PTJ over at the bot, le at the bot side. As Yoshi currently hit level 3, is around this bot side, not finding all that much, and will in fact be walking across the wall just now. We'll do so. Yoshi's standard will be spotted out on the um the red the, the, by the by the ward there in that brush just over the wall. He did a full topside clear into red buff. He has camps available. Probably going to stick around for the scuttle crab now. Level Whereas Hatchimensha went for the full clear from bot to top. Will be ending up with a uh, slight camp advantage or at least timing advantage, but does lose out on the bot to scuttle. Yeah, and we saw there that Art and Vivid did back at level two. Picked up the early call. Which I know you're a fan of. Yeah, so early call, I think if you back on 450 gold, it's really a gold efficient by, um, allows you to have the extra sustain in lane with the extra 3 HP on hit. That's the old Doran's Blade passive, for those of you who remember it. I mean, it might have been two seasons ago now. Now it just gives straight life steal. But um, <laughs> it, it means that your early game sustain is pretty okay. Speaking of uh, early game sustain, um, it, it's the fleet footwork for the set in the top lane. Helps you survive these poke matchups just a little better. Yeah, and he went down to like a quarter HP is already back up to three quarters. Used the pot and uh, his passive as well. That secondary passive outside from the pit clip does give him a lot of regeneration, even if it has been nerfed. Yoshi actually potentially hanging around the bot lane here mm. looking for he's, a gank of some sort. Cl clears out half hmm. of the crows there. Doesn't end up clearing all of them. Maybe thinks that's not time efficient enough. Uh, is there going to be another fight over Gromp? <laughs> I think it we, might be. That was the story, last game. That was the story of game one. Yoshi's was... here. This time it's mine, he says. But Hachimacha around and Yoshi goes, okay, maybe I'll give this one away. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe that's the real... Frog to unclog. Maybe that's it. No Tom Kench. It. No Tom Kench. There is no Tom Kench. Tom Kench is not actually a frog in catfish. Although, uh, you know that... Um, Discriminate against you know that wannabe actually, uh, frog Tom Kench. So, actually, um, Grump. Yeah. The, the whole thing about Grump is that it's actually the poisonous um, fungus, which it, the, fro the frog sits on, which is Grump. Oh, I see. And then so it kind it of it mutates is... the frog. And yeah, so when you kill a frog, you see the frog... Um, when you kill Grump, you see the frog like hopping away. Ah. It's actually the the the, the, to the, the toadstool. Thing. So it's actually some horrific parasite. You yep. know, like that thing yeah, that I kills all the ants. Yep. So it's not even a frog either. We've been lied to. Um, I believe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I believe it's fake news. Yeah, it's fake news. It's a fake. It's a fake frog. It's a fake frog. Fake everything. Fake frog. And, uh, what isn't fake is the damage coming onto Ninja here. Yeah, um, it's still pretty tanky. He's got a catalyst. At this point. There's only a stinger available to Ardia right now. It gives you attack speed, but none of the AP. Whereas Ninja, with that passive on Orn, being able to build up any non-consumable item in lane, builds up the catalyst, which is so good for this lane sustain. Yeah, just goes home, buys himself. I believe that was uh, refillable, and I, he's going to come straight back out to lane uh, with his mana there, yeah. refilled. And the TP burned. Do you remember when there were mana pots in the game? I do. That was that was some time ago now, actually. I it think wasn't that, was that long ago with Kleptomancy allowing you to get them oh, in some true, ways. True. Uh, but I mean, being able to buy. We've been season season six. six, I think they were removed, maybe something like that. It was a while ago. I remember them being around in season five, but um, yeah. not beyond that point. So. Looking at the lane state, it's a 10CS lead in the top lane. We kind of expect that from the Bully of the Karma, but Nap is not in the threat of being dived just yet. Um, is surviving okay, but obviously the lead is there for Coco. It's whether he can leverage it into any kind of pressure on the map, which will be important. Yeah, and this is kind of what we've seen from Set to end up in match like, matches like this. They they are quite, well, Set is quite good as a champion on low economy. Hmm. As long as he can get into a backline, pull off some face breakers, get a good showstopper, and he's kind of immediately useful. I, I agree. I was, I was about to make that point, particularly in regards to way back in the day uh, when Maokai was more meta. Yeah, Maokai was the low economy top lane. You don't mind playing weak side of the map around him and kind of focusing on the bot side, which is kind of what Yoshi has done. He's been looking around the bot side more often than not. Once again, kind of just headbutting with Hatchimacha, keeping him accountable. Gonna clear out a little bit of vision down here as well. Arya also moving down 
for a potential blue buff steal. But there is the Call of the Forge God available from Ninja if he too wants to run down. Yeah, thinking about it. Blue buff steal, complete rend available. Not sure who's going to go over to. It will it's go to Arya, and that's a big deal. And it does love thing. using that. And they're going to transition straight into the first rake of the game, which is a cloud. And even with just the one rank in the, the Damascian standard there, having it with the extra attack speed onto the Callista, who's not built up, well, built up the Berserker's Greaves first, and then um, the Azir as well, just means your DPS on objectives is ridiculously strong. So we'll have to keep track of that the longer this game goes. Join me on a brief tangent, dear brother, uh, okay. and explain to me why that standard is so good and why you can use it in support. <sighs> okay. So, here we go with this. so um, <laughs> for those of you who watched a lot of LCK last year, you will know that uh, Spirit of the Afrika Freaks may have played Jarvan support, it may have been AP, and may have gone airy because it procs off of the standard because it does count as a buff. And that means you can build Ardent Sensor on it and stuff like that. Oh, so actually, oh. you give a load of attack speed, and uh, he's going to use this... Oh, oh he's going to be smited away. away. Yeah, was, uh, was it taken by... No, no, Hachimachi did get it. It's smited by, uh, smited by the Rex Slayer there. Um, unlucky timing by Yoshi just well timed from Hachimecha there getting the slight edge on these early trades again but nothing to the same level that it was the last game and both are level six at the same time and yoshi having taken away a blue buff and a dragon will take that trade oh and she no. didn't get that flag and i had to flash away but here comes the execute but that's a good smite to keep yoshi alive he face break oh, and keeps him breaker. alive well played he's actually getting showstop not over the wall though and Hachimecha will survive uh has got a tunnel available to him as long as aria doesn't come in and shuffle him away that okay. looked like it was going to be significantly scarier than Oh, he's was. just used the Shifting Sands. He's actually from a flash! Oh. From both. The, curl, the Forge God comes out. So, yeah. That was we're going to next time. That was very, very necessary from out of there. Kind of misusing his cooldown a little bit there. Just to make sure he can get back to lane in slightly more timely fashion. But Vivid, with a good roam, trades the flash. And it is more important to take the flash away from the Azir when you're trying to get on top of him. And now there is a flash disparity between both the mid laners and then, of course, the jungle as well. Yoshi shorted the flag and drag combo. The standard was dropped on the wrong side of the oh. wall, right on his feet, and it meant that he couldn't get away over that wall. It cost him a flash at the end of the day, and a lot of pressure too. And that is the risk when you are a bit of a rookie. You get caught in those kind of panic situations and where maybe normally you would be able to react smoothly, calmly. When the pressure is on, you're down a game. That kind of thing comes out. Well played by Nap to nearly punish Hatcher Mecha though, uh, but Vivid's Roam at the end of it all forces a flash out of Aria. Okay. Definitely but, just but a slight at, advantage. But, but, but we look right here. So it normally the summoner cooldown is the important kind of thing there because you're then at a cooldown disparity. But if they fight right now, there are no ultimates available from that deal. So that's why it was so dangerous for Rascal Jester to be looking into the river there with the Emperor's Divide and also the Cataclysm available. Now the Void Rush has come back up for the Rex side, but if they have fought at that point in time, oh, they would have been down in combat available abilities. And that's a freeze down bot from Gango, but Hatchimech is there to try and turn that around. Plate claimed by Cog Cog. Grendel is here looking to get stop this Blitzcrank okay. is coming and punches him up and I think he's just going to die. No, Fate's Call is available, of course, thing, but that means that massive chain of corruption comes Ooh. in, forces double summoners out of Gango. It's an exhaust burn by Vivid. It is, and it's both summoners down by Gango as well. With the Void Rush still available from the Rex side, I can't help but feel this is very risky from CJ to stick uh, around and here. Here's actually that mass. The demolish proc was huge. The Rift Herald is summoned. They're looking to try and get first turret down here. Yoshi's There's around. There's a teleport from Nap but available. I don't think they're going to stop it. Yep, no, the t teleport from Nap is available. There is a ward in that bush. Uh, way up in river, so definitely room to get a flank in. They don't <sighs> quite claim first out, but they do I, get four plates. I can't help but feel like if you teleport in with a showstopper from Nap there, maybe you can start turn that, uh, turning that around because of the two ultimates down from the Varus and the Blitzcrank there. Vivid has managed to show that, uh, yeah, it, it, there was a lot of burst available to a Blitzcrank. In that combo in particular, it was well held by Art there on his ultimate to make sure that um, the Fates Call came down first and then the Chains of Corruption landed onto the Callista for the extra kill pressure because you don't want to overload your CC into the support which can be pulled out by the Callista ultimate. Yeah, and uh, that means it is advantage to Justice, but once again, it's these kind of slight advantages where CGA escape without giving up any kills. And that's a big deal. What is not going so well is the turret pressure. That's a lot of plates now in bot and more in top kind of starting to head that way. We've talked about top players that what the two plates advantage is. I kind of feel like yeah. Karma probably fits into that mold when she's I, in this, this, in this matchup. I believe so, yeah. Um, 
going towards the um, the lost chapter, which means that one of those 20% CDR items will be coming in at some point. Probably not the Saros because it's no tier early. I, GLP? Th I think GLP would be pretty okay this game, uh, but there's no Glacial available. It could also just be a Ludens. Yeah, uh, I think it, pro it probably... Rock. Yeah, Big I believe poke. Ludens is um, pretty good just for the the extra kind of uh, wave clear potential, extra shoving potential. Yeah, and it's but... just good raw AP as well. And raw AP on a Karma means more utility. Yeah. Oh, Vivid lands. does get hooked and he's going to get flayed back, but not over the wall. Vivid has no flash and that's just well played by Grand and the rest of the team. First blood over onto Arya on this Azir. Okay, Great so... Great ward over the back there that spotted him, I think. It is, and uh, Grendel says, oh, you hooked me a couple of times. Well, I can do one better. Mine's actually going to result in first blood. We did, I did say in Champion Select, I do like Grendel's Thresh. I think it has been pretty effective for the team of CGA before. It's coming up pretty big here so far. It evens up the gold score thus far. Yoshi might have overstayed here, though. Yeah, ninjas around. That Ooh. tunnel didn't get him <laughs> so on top of Yoshi. And Art, therefore, does get to step back up to this turret and stop it from going down, which is a big deal, because... There's CJ no smite available from Hachimacha here. Yeah, it's just taken by Yoshi. It is. That's another hook onto Art, but it's no flay over the wall. And actually, that's a pretty oh, big blast deal. Plan. Stop watches burned. Call of the Forge God is gone. There's lots of teleports coming in. Oh, but that's a massive hook. It's onto Gangle. Remember, has no flash, but he's hopping away. Vivid is going to die. No, he does go down. But that's a huge shuffle. shuffle. Arya does all the work. It's a double to set in the back line. And all said and done, that's three kills to one. As Ninja's now in trouble. That flag of drag doesn't quite get on top of him. But somehow, some way, Gango goes down, sure, but not before the rest of Rascal Justice gets slaughtered. Huge players across the board there. Gango manages to get in and out of the fight, at least getting one kill before the Ignite takes him down from Ninja. Ninja himself flashing in for an Ignite combo onto the Callista, which means that at least they get one return kill. Ario with a huge combo at the end of it too, with the shuffle into the wall. We start this play with a bit of a blue buff of it. I was wondering if it was an overstay, and with Grendel getting caught out early, it looked to be that way, but the early stopwatch into the Fates Call comes out pretty massive, and the flashing from Nap is just oh, so huge. So good. It's Pulls a, Art away from killing off Gango uh, and Grendel, too. Look at this. Huge Haymaker, three soldiers in there. It's just so many soldiers in that one point there. There's just no escape from that. Three kills very quickly going the way of CGA. For a moment, I thought that was super stylish because you saw, right, it was a chain of corruption into a blast plant oh, huge, by yeah. art to get Grendel out of position, but the response from CGA was really swift. Actually, they're thinking about going straight back onto it. They go for a flash! Gone. They're in, and Hachimech is in behind, but I think they're going to be too late. No, wait! Hachimech is here, they turn it around, Jarvan's just dead, Yoshi's gone too far. Art is dead, so that's something, but the Void Rush comes through, Grendel's going to fall down as well, and now Gango's in trouble, trying to get this turn Arya's around. Here. Arya's turn here. Around. Arya is here, he gets knocked up, but he's got a lot of damage, and it's all getting turned around. Ninja in a 1v2, he's a tanky boy, but he's Three out soldiers. of cooldowns. Vivid does oh. not get the hook inches away heal was massive from Gango would have been a big one way or another and that is a massive shuffle to punt that ninja on into death such good work I think that's a three for one in the end it's it's well, I, you know what I'm gonna have to watch that back three I believe two. it's three for two at the end of that but it really got pretty hectic there so this is reminding me of the early weeks of CJ. just Arya and Gra Gra Gango just kind of outplaying at some points this fight Yoshi goes in really early here, traps both people with no flashes, and Gango starts trying to put down the damage. Arya does not get here at the start of the play, though, and Ninja, with the Ghost Summoner available to him, ends up getting here early into the fight. He also manages to CC Gango for a long, long time, but it's not long enough to make sure that Arya doesn't make his way into the fight at the end of it. Yeah, and it just meant they ran out oh, of damage, and if that hook had landed, could you imagine? That is pixels away but it is those pixels that often determine victors in these close run games. That's a couple fights now where inches have separated CGA and Rascal Jesters, and currently it's CGA 2-0 on those fights. It is, and it's also a K advantage for each of their carries. Chains the Corruption lands onto Grendel. It's going to be the hook just missed out on there. I think they didn't want to commit onto the Thresh, who still had Fate's Call, and of course the Aftershock available. The Aftershock's come in pretty huge in a couple yeah, of these has. fights already. First, the one which was like the Chains of Corruption to the Blast Plant, procced the uh, Aftershock for a first initial b um, bout of damage, and then uh, that right there, it just kind of threatens the extra tankiness, the extra time saved. Yeah. Hook lands. Another land. Grendel is having a fantastic game. Vivid is super low. The silence is in, but so is the Fate's Call. Vivid staying alive. They're going to try and get oh, a dive here. Fall of the Forge God is down. Turret is dead. Grendel is still alive one way or another. Oh, he's just too far out. Inches out of his bar. And Rascal Justice Art is now stuck. 
dancing away from this. Kalista and can't do it. Goes down to Gango. Turret goes down, but oh, oh so close. And just misses the shuffle. Just the one kill, but once again, Pixels, outplay man. by CGA. Once again, it's Pixels. They do have the second Herald available to uh, CGA. They don't have the many ultimates to fight with, but with the man advantage and the consistent damage source of Arya and Gango still alive, they will buy themselves this bot lane turret, and Gango will... Uh, Stay around in this bot lane. I'm not sure if... Yeah, okay. The lantern's available. He's just going to clear out the way before he heads back to base. Probably going to complete his Blade of the Rune King now. And he will be heading up to these first couple of item spikes, which are so important for the Callista. He's full 1 and 2, by it's the huge. way. It's so huge. Like, and actually, also, like, credit to Grendel. 0, 1, and 7 has only missed out participation in one kill. This guy has been performing so well. And yes, that's yep. with the Joe of Gango. Good use to Fate's Call and the rest of it. But still, you can sort of see... How this guy, when he is being very proactive and very aggressive, when it does work out, can absolutely win games. Where Vivid has mixed hooks by pixels, Grendel has hit them by pixels, and that is what's giving on the edge right Vivid's been punished. Hey, hey, hear, hear me out here. You, you have a red eye robot? I have not read it. I've watched it. Yeah, the you, the Will you know, Smith version. You, you know the three rules of robots? What uh, do you reckon? Rob, yes, so we know. Well, so we have the three rules of eye robot. What are the three rules of uh, eye blitzcrank? Is it like a uh, thou shalt like you will never harm your duo partner? But that's obviously a lie because yeah. he obviously does. Yeah. He, ho he hooks like the the, the Alistair into your face. Uh, thou wilt taunt with mastery seven uh, with every hit. Mastery hook. four, dude. Mastery, mastery four. four. Yeah. Taunt at mastery four with every miss. And speaking hook. of mastery, master of the sands here does it. It gets away from the encroach danger of the collapse onto top lane area getting out and that will mean that the soul point is claimed by cga rascal just are not wanting to fight in a big 5v5 at this point in time they Ooh, might want to fight in mid lane yeah though. they do Ooh. land the uh, chains of corruption onto grendel but that's not necessarily the best choice because he's still got fates call available that's another time teleport the grendel gets out because they focused him and not got the kill nap, nap is in doing a lot of damage but ninja's in the back now there is no call of the forge card available oh he misses, misses it, it! Oh, he's looked so good in the previous game. We're trying to get a turnaround onto Nap. I think he probably changed targets later on into that after a call from a team and just missed it. And there might have been some communication there which put him off, but either way, it does miss. There are health bars blinking onto Grendel there, but there are no kills secured by Rascal Jester. And that's another one that's just gone away from them. And Art is at Blade of the Ring King. He's got the cull that he's kind of cashed in at this point. But he's an item behind this Callista. This Azir is two items as well. The Banshee's Veil you were talking about is complete at this point. It is. So there are two items completed. Importantly on the Callista, as we were saying. The Hurricane coming in. Meaning that these team fights are now going to go even further in the favour of CJ. If Gango is allowed to free fire onto any of the members of Rascal Jester. I don't even think Ninja really wants to be stood up against this Callista. Who has been accelerated so heavily. Yep. And that's definitely one way of putting it. There is, uh, oh, how do we put, like, a difficult situation for the Jess. We told how they could definitely run out of damage, and it's not quite there yet, but they have got not that long to make a play that gets them back into this game. They're only down a thousand gold right now, but with how CGA scale and how Nap and Gango and Arya and Grendel, the whole team really. Oh, Nap's actually it's going for a big yeah, trade here. Thresh is on his way up. Oh, yeah, they are, and that's what we're talking about when they're all playing Forces of Flash out of Ninja. Ooh. Good Bellows Breath, just in case he did get hit by the hook. It doesn't matter anyway. But that kind of proactivity is currently giving CJ that much more pressure okay. on the map. Well, it's two ults traded for a flash. So in the long, in the short term, it means no ultimate cooldowns. In the long term, it means no flash away if this Orn gets into the back lane, into the thick of things. We'll see how that works out in the long run if there is going to be a fight when that is still off on cooldown. 
Yeah, we'll have to see. There is an Infernal Soul on the line. Not quite yet. Still a couple of minutes away. But that is the encroaching doom for Rascal Jesters. They have got to stop that going over. Otherwise, Arya and Gango in particular are going to be putting out some uh, biblical levels of damage, yeah, I would say. It's going to be pretty huge. Um, and I have to say, I'm going to commend uh, Gango and Grenel playing around the Callista Thresh as compared to their... Uh, some of their games throughout the regular split with their Callista um, Nautilus, I feel like Randall has played more safe. He has ended up finding more advantages from the hooks he's landed. And overall, it has benefited the team because they know that their mid lane wave clear duo of uh, the Callista and Thresh can be safe coming into this mid game. And what do the Jesters have to do to potentially find a way back into this game? Because obviously CJ are very much an advantage, particularly in that Drake count. Oh, I, okay. With the QSS picked up by Callista, it gets a little bit harder because they had been looking onto a couple of outplay moments onto the duo lane there. I don't think this karma is going to affect the side lane too much. It's been a little quiet, but we, if we go into team fights and Art manages to free fire with his own two items, the Blow of the Rain King and the um, and Ooh. okay and uh, the Runan's Hurricane, we could see some very high damage coming out of him, particularly buffed up um, with the Athenes. No ardent sensor just yet, but the extra peel is uh, pretty apparent on the side of Rascal Jester. Yeah, but they do need to keep Art safe, and there are a number of ways to get onto people. At least have Flash. But if Yoshi and Nap and Arya and Grendel and Gang, all of these guys have got like ways to like get onto this uh, Varus. It's going to be very hard for this guy to position in a way that allows him to put out consistent damage. But he's going to need to. He will do indeed. However, Rascal Jester obviously have a lot of pick potential. They have the Orn for follow-up engage. So if a hook lands onto one of these targets which don't have any defensive measures, something like a Jarvan in which they can CC into death, maybe they can start trying to do that around an objective fight. Um, Arya currently has the Banshee spell. It's going to be popped now. That is important. It means that the next skill shot will not be shielded. And uh, Vivid still looking for these hooks. This Blitzcrank pick hasn't really worked out quite yet. It's been close. A lot it has of near been misses, close. but near misses are not mi are not hit, and that is a big deal. Like yeah. uh, you can doesn't say... mean if doesn't matter if you're one percent off. It does mean it misses. Yeah, you, you don't get a participation award. That's not how it works. Joshi so actually might get picked here. For thinking about it, Ooh. does get the flag and drag away. That's what we're talking about. Though. If that had landed, that could have been something. And instead, flash hook. Randall does get the flash hook, and that's what's going to matter. As Hatcher Mecha flashes away, but he gets dunked. He's going to take the void rush into Doom and Gandalf Gandalf. gets that one and the showstopper in the back line is massive Aria come through and that is a shuffle to end all shuffle Vivid is down as well and it's just Cog Cog running away one direction while Ninja runs the other Rascal Jesters are falling apart as the Infernal Drake. The Infernal Soul is there for CGA's taking. And much as we saw in our first series of the day, sometimes you just have to fight around the soul. This time it goes over to arguably the scaling composition, the multi-threat composition of CGA, who find a huge fight just before that fourth dragon. This is no Hail of Blades Azir. This is the lethal, tempo, lethal yeah. tempo with two items and a blasting one. This is a Callista at 7, 1, and 2. And they have an Infernal Soul and a Baron set in their sights. Set in their sights indeed. As set is on the Baron. Hatchimacha is alive and does have smite available. He's, find He's gonna get hooked. He's first, just though. solo and the Baron's already dead. They find a hook on a Grendel, but I don't think that's gonna matter. Remember the Fate's Call still alive? No, Rascal Jester's art does pick that one up. At least they get one kill in return. Yeah, so Fate's Call was on cooldown using the previous fight there. So a little bit, uh, ooh, ooh okay, right. No, hook uh, is... Yoshi's potentially in a bit of bother. Does just walk away yeah, there. Okay. Going to try and trade at least onto this. And that's massive shields from it, that device. And actually, after this, I believe that um, uh, the, 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 the Callista is 7, oh, 1, and 5. Jesus. Huge amount of damage there. So the hook misses from Vivian. At that point, Grendel knows it's on. We have the first hook here. Flashes and uh, interrupts the tunnel from Hachimecha. means he has no way out of the Cataclysm. Yoshi puts his body on the line. Uses the stopwatch to keep himself topped up. To the, well, keep himself alive. And then the shuffle onto Art means that he just has no way to stand and fire. And... And uh, the rest of the kills kind of just follow in afterwards. Ninja, of course, being very tanky, doesn't go down there. Now we see CJ pushing in through the mid lane. Hatchmesher does have a flank, but going up against this Inferno... You're gonna hook onto hook. Set, but it's onto Set, who just shows up and says, this is exactly oh, where I huge. want to be! Shut down for sure, but CGA are just running this fight over. Aria oh. will go down, though. Maybe they've got a little deep. I take that back. It's, it's a, three a three for two. What? Three for two. And Ninja's actually going on to Gango, but Gango is still kiting. It's gonna get Void Rushed on, but he's still 
life. He's going to try and turn oh, it around. It's a triple kill for Hatcher Mecha, who's still desperate to turn this around. Five, three, and one on this Rek side. And right there's a last kill. It's going to be a full A. CGA. Oh, oh baby. God. Oh, come on, CGA. You had a... <laughs> oh, come on. You were so far ahead in the lead there. Ariad goes a little bit too deep. Uh, breaks a stopwatch for the pleasure of it as well. Just uh, a little too deep after the hook lands. The initial thought of trying to engage with the Wombo was good, but they don't finish off Art. I actually, no, they did finish off Art there. He's actually one of five, unfortunately. <laughs> but a diving turret is a way that you can lose this game. You don't, aren't the tankiest team ever. You have a Sterics on Nap. That's cool. But, you know, oh. you're not the most tanky person ever. Nap just kind of... Uh... They thought they had this. Look yeah. at Nap's showstopper. It's so good. This it, looks it's like pretty it's good. brilliant. It's, and it's a pretty huge um, a haymaker as well. But once, like, the tower starts coming in... And and it's a good, it's a very good call of the Forge God. Uh, you can't stand there in three people and expect you're going to live, especially as one of the backlines. And then Gango chooses not to take the lantern. I think that's a little bit of hubris there, if I'm honest. Um, it's a good flay out of the Searing Charge to try and stop some of uh, the extra CC coming in. But Hatchimetra has more than enough damage with the Halo Blade direct side to finish off Gango. Yes, he does. And uh, cast your mind back to week six. Oh, CGA no. versus oh, no. Pascal Jester. CGA once were in that one were in a commanding lead had the soul a soul themselves I believe in that one and uh, it didn't matter because Rascal Jesters just pulled team fights out of their asses. I believe, uh, so I believe that was um, a cloud soul in that game. Which it was is one of the less. Least, it's, it's, it's one of the worst ones for closing out a game, right? Because yeah. you don't have that immediate combat buff unless you're on certain champions like you know Aatrox, Olaf. You know these people who really want to run at you. Um, in this game, it's the Infernal, which does mean the extra damage will come through, particularly in the likes of Assassinating Art. That will be very impactful because he doesn't have himself the likes of a Bloodthirster to um, uh, really keep himself defended. Uh, he has the Karma, of course. That does help with the extra shield. But if the burst comes through and he's already dead, shields don't matter. Yeah, the big thing, though, for the Jesters is that Art is two levels behind Gang. That's huge. Yeah. And that is a big deal, especially when he is so much damage. Currently, they are finding some ways. They're on the set again, but he's not taking all that much damage. Actually, gets a big, big chunk of Vivid. Takes a massive chunk from that Haymaker. True damage. Oh, the Art oh. Slay set in the back line. Jesters, thinking about turning this around. Yoshi goes down to Cog Cog. This game is suddenly back on the table. That's two fights in a row that the Jesters have turned around. Flash forward, interrupted by a shuffle. That's a big deal. Art getting out over that Ooh. wall. Shuffle away with the shifting sand to avoid that uh, rocket grab from Vivid. Okay, right. So Nap just uh, kind of walking forward past Vision there in a bit of an uncharacteristic moment where he does just kind of get out of position. We have big objectives spawning in the next two minutes. We have 1 minute 20 on the Elder Dragon, 1 minute 50 on the Baron. CJ are very good at taking these objectives with the Callista and the Azir, but if they keep taking fights and losing map control and losing vision control, this game could fall away from them still. Yeah, and uh, you can sort of see how the Jester's comp works because with the Athenes on this Karma, the moment she shields things, those people you've just chugged out are right back to full. And like Hachimecha and Ninja well, no. can do a lot of stuff. Ardent as well. Art is at a point where he can carry with three items and an upgraded Molten Edge. That is a lot of damage from this carry if he stays alive. And it's the upgraded Ludens as well. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of damage available to the side of Rascal Jester now on some of their secondary members. Ninja's been putting out good damage across this game as well. Some big multi-man call of the Forge Gods. And now we see Rascal Jester with the positioning with 30 seconds to go onto this Elder Drake. And with vision control, and there are a few things quite as scary as a Blitzcrank out of vision. Yes, Jester's won these last few fights, but remember it's still an Infernal Soul and some damn hairy amounts of damage coming in from okay. CGA. So there's a lot of fights that could still go CGA's way. It just won't be as clean as they were once hoping right now. Yes, Banshee survives. Oh. It's just gone down now. That's pretty important. Yoshi oh, is caught! It's a big hook, but remember, the Call of Fortune is coming through. There's a Cataclysm down at the bottom. Massive Showstopper one more time. Hatcher is alive. staying alive. Aria is still alive, but actually on to Nap in the back line is Art. Trying to get as much damage. Haymaker is huge. Massive true damage, but Art Gango? slays Santa. Gango is dancing. He's not touched. She Yoshi is still alive. Somehow, some way, Ninja just about alive, but actually gets on to that. The Aria! Gango, he's alive. Art is there, and he's winning this one. Aria trying desperately to get on, and oh. he shut down triple for Art, who is playing these late game fights like a god. Those are some huge karma shields coming out, and it's the, regardless of the objectives, up or down, it's Rascal Jesters who take the fight. They're going to take a mid lane in um, mid lane inner turret and peel back for whatever they choose at this point. Yoshi being alive might end up. Persuading them, 
but they are going to move towards the Elder Dragon. Yoshi is alive, and he could do a lot of work here. They're quite low health bars here. Yes, Hachimecha has got that Fury to kind of heal up with the passive, but that's all he's got. There's a Honey Fruit. He's going to have to go towards it. Art here. They have yeah, got Art tankiness. The Yoshi, they're they're going to try and turn this around this. Oh, Jesters, have you overstayed? Naps here. They're going to try and get a pick. They're going to think about it. They missed the oh, hook. Yes, they know yes, what's yes. going on, and I think they're going to have to back but away. But importantly, that means that now CGA might be able to counter Elder Dragon here because they need to reset the Rascal Jester. We see the Blitzcrank going back. Nap is here with Yoshi. They might stick around for here. They're TPing in without it. This might be the Elder Dragon seeded by Rascal Jester. Vivid still so down low. The health bar trade. Oh, the Jesters thought they'd found their opening. And CGA come right back out. That one missed hook could decide the game. Look who's gone in. It's that Grendel again. Look at the back. Yoshi. Yoshi's taking so much damage, he's gone down one more time. Ninja's got a stopwatch still. Grendel is gonna go down. Just stop the stop the stop the huge. So is that shuffle. And this time, the shutdowns are there for CGA. They win this fight. Three for three at the end of it. Both junglers down, but, but the with... carries are alive. The carries are alive, and they're gonna take this Elder Dragon very, very quickly. It's only the supportive members of Rascal Jester alive, but they do have a little bit of damage to them. If Adia gets hit by something, maybe it can come up. But Gango, oh, very close to landing that pierce there. No oh, slow available. This is high octane team fights. And I had thought that CGA had this game in the bag and just as once again prove that they have this grit, this kind of magic to pull fights out of a hat. They are the jesters for a reason. But CGA are no slouches. This was just immense stuff. Okay, so the big thing here is that the Lantern is used to get Gango into the fight. Maybe Rascal Jester didn't think that Gango could get here so early coming from base. Adi and Gango untouched in the back line, but Yoshi goes down very, oh, very early. Nap gets a huge haymaker here. But the Athenes almost keeps Art uh, topped up. But then, of course, the Emperor's Divide comes in. And then, uh, yeah, that's... Oh, wow. So we're back to live. And it's a Baron being started and taken down at immense speed. And they're going to get it. There's no way the Jesses can compete this time. Double uber buff for CGA. They thought they had it in the bag before. If they don't close it out now, then they are never going to win this game. And it will break their mentality, you have to think. It's... The Jesters, they've got a Bloodthirster now on Art. He's already getting a lot of healing with that. Maybe he can tank up the enough damage in these fights but to stay the, alive but on the other side we have double infernal with a death cap onto this azir who also has a void staff this is broken in this this azir might just auto like triple auto and, and art dies area they've loses got to find banshees it. they've though. got to find an engage to the justice this could be it they're looking to just end it they've got the damage the turrets are already taking massive damage just from two or three or two fishing if it's fishing for a hook yeah, but the moment that hook goes down cga are free to move towards this tower they're and they're gonna hook in the cannon that's not a bad move the wave is dead for now they're waiting on a second one side lanes are going against them there's not really much that they can do here they're trying to push in with the last 40 seconds of the elder dragon seeing if they can get themselves a fight with the uber buff and then remember that uber buff gives them massive advantage it's an infernal soul on top of it they have every right to win this game but you cataclysm done the cataclysm comes in everything's getting knocked up gango is taken to massively low hp ninja's in behind him but he's still like it's a double kill for aria who is using his emperor divide to divide the jesters from a second win this time around cga win a final fight and they will even this series up one two one and with the crazy team oh. fights of the second game it is not the rascal jesters which come out on top this time but cga back and forth back and forth in game score as well one and one mass one what did you think of that game that was god i i couldn't pick where who was going to be the winner of that game there was just so much happening in so many different spots i i'm kind of that was that was down and dirty league of legends that was right. That was that was pretty much mud wrestling. If you could make <laughs> that into a League of Legends game, it was uh, back and forth. Everyone kind of tussling with everyone. Obviously not playing. I'm sorry. The words just stuck in my head. <laughs> I keep saying it. Arya and Gango showing us how they got to the top of the standings very briefly, yeah. tied for second. Also showing how they ended up at the bottom. <laughs> also showing how he ended up in the bottom as well at some points. I I want to commend Yoshi for even though that um he had some early game snafus. Had some big cataclysms in the he late did, game. He, he did. didn't necessarily make himself out alive. Could have maybe played the team fights a bit cleaner. Grendel also having a pretty good game on the Thresh, not feeling like he died uselessly. Ended up using the Fates Call very well alongside his hooks, particularly that flash hook at the dragon was so... So justice. critical.
And that is that X Factor to the Jesters still. They found a way back into a game they had no right to yeah. be in. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> right to be in. They were down Infernal Soul, oh, like 10 kills, huge amounts of gold. There was a Baron buff they were shoving in. <laughs> they were getting outscaled. It was all going wrong. That being said, give me three more games of oh, that. <laughs> so good. I mean, I don't know if Initial Boy's uh, initialized voice will uh, initial keep. Boys. Initial Boy's. Oh. Uh, Initializer's voice will uh, keep for all those games uh, if it is Not that high mind. uptake. Oh, it was. I was kind of prepared to go out with a nice, serious, solid ending towards that at the first Barrow Push. It just. It devolved nah. into chaos because the jesters just will not go quietly in these late games. And CGA, once again, Degeneracy. Their, yeah. their end games are a little bit lax. They can be punished. And the jesters.